Um, real talk is real talk. I've been a pastor for a bit and um, one of the things I know doesn't happen is when people get to church, the pastor mounts the pulpit, ask questions. What doesn't happen is people don't get to ask the pastor anything. They just listen. They understand. They don't understand. They get up. They walk away. They have attended church. If they have questions to ask, if they have things they don't understand has happened in the service, something they heard the pastor say, they talk to each other. And they don't get to ask the person that God used to do the preaching to. And so a lot of people um, go home with their own perception of what they think the pastor is saying. And um, God laid this in my heart to be able to, um, I would say, deal with those kind of questions that people would want to be able to ask that they are not able to ask concerning all kinds of things in church, all kinds of things in society, all kinds of things in their lives. And it's, it's real talk because I want us to be able to be as honest as we can be with every subject. I want us to be able to look at it and see, honesty is not built on my own perception. Honesty, the core essence of being honest is going back to what the Bible says concerning any subject. You understand? So we're not going to say, oh, I'm going to be honest about it because this is how I feel. No, we're honest because this is what the word says. This is what the Bible says about it. So we are going to be dealing with so much gray areas, things that people don't want to talk about, things that the church doesn't, is even afraid to touch with a nine feet pole. The issues of our sexualities. People come to church and um, pastors are afraid to preach about someone being gay. What does God say about it? Relationship matters, a depression, um, personality disorders. People don't come and stand on the pulpit and say, my topic today is um, being a narcissist or as a, this is a personality disorder and I want us to discuss about it. That's not an everyday church um, topic that, you know, pastors will preach about. Um, misconceptions that people have about the way church runs. For instance, I'm a female and I'm a pastor and I'm the founder of the church. And this is like one in one million churches because there is already a perception of how a female, whether she should pastor or not, whether she should even go to work or not. I'm surprised that at the, the 21st century, people are still thinking that way and people are using the Bible to want to say that that is not going to happen. So real talk is we're going back to what the scripture says. There's a lot going on about the message of prosperity. Should we even preach it in church? Um, how is it that it should be looked at? Why should... So if someone hears that somebody is preaching against prosperity, the person just comes to want to defend prosperity because he believes in it or doesn't believe in it. But we want to be able to go back to what scripture says. So I know that as we progress, people are going to send in their questions. People are going to say, how do you look at this matter? Or how do you look at this matter? But this is the chance that the audience have to ask questions about things that are concern God. And you're not asking a lay person what I would say, I hate to use that term, but you know, for lack of any other way to explain it. You're not just talking to someone who is not a Christian or someone who is not a pastor. I've been a pastor for a bit. I've had to deal with all kinds of people. I've had to deal with all kinds of perceptions and doctrines. So whatever subject we pick, it will be real talk. Right. So you, you said you've been a pastor for a, uh, a bit. Mm -hmm. Since we're talking real talk, how mm -hmm. bit is this bit? Ooh, I've been a pastor since 1993. <laughs> <laughs> since 1993. And church... That's has, how long you've been alive. That's how long you've been alive. Well, that's great. That's really great. But Well, you see, um, so that tells you that I have a lot of experience. I have a lot of experience. Latter House as a church, as we know it, Latter House, the arm of this part of my life in ministry, didn't start until 2009. I mean, 2010, sorry. But I've been a pastor with Elion and all that, you know, for that long. And you can, you can imagine, I would, I would literally say I've been a church girl for more than half my life. So I was a member before I was a pastor. And I have led different units, different groups, even as a member of church. 
you know, meeting Christ the way that I did. So I know all the times that I didn't even want to be a, a church person. You know, I being from a member, how I was treated as a member. Now I'm a pastor. How do I treat people? And I'm drawing from all of that to be able to say, there are so many things we are afraid to talk about in the church. There are so many things we are afraid to deal with. The pastor is afraid to talk about these things because he doesn't want to offend his members or he doesn't want to even offend the general community. But you know what? Being a female living in northern Nigeria, pastoring a church in northern Nigeria, founding a church in northern Nigeria, to be honest with you, I would, even if I, I cannot say I've seen it all, I've seen more than 90% of the left foot of fellowship because I'm not the right gender to pastor a church and I'm not the right look to pastor a church because there's a way I'm supposed to look, to look, to be a pastor. I'm not supposed to wear nails. I'm not supposed to do this. So I have one side of church saying, yay, the other bulkier side of church saying, you don't have a right to do that. So I've come through all that, really, value of the shadow of death. And I want to be able to talk to people who are honest enough to say, this is my concept, this is what I feel, what do you think, Pastor? And then to be able to just share trust in the Holy Spirit that um, every time we are on air, we're bringing something that will help someone. I have a serious passion for young people. I think they are the most misunderstood um, group of people on the face of the earth. People uh, judge them by everything else. A young person is judged by just being young. And people just have it in their minds that because you're young, you're wayward, you're la you, have, you lack focus, and whatever, and my son is here, and he's too focused, <laughs> right? So I, I'm, I, I want us to be able to talk. Yes, questions will be asked me, and I will give answers, but I also want the other side to be heard. I also want young people to be heard. I also want women to be heard. I don't want them to be heard um, from, um, I'm just abused, I'm, my husband is beating me, my boyfriend is beating me, this other one, because I'm passionate about relationships. I, I want the person who is the abuser, if you're watching, to hear what you're doing when you abuse someone. You understand what I'm saying? I want, whether it's a male or a female, because I know women who abuse as well. There are different ways that you can abuse people. So this is my experience of being a pastor from that long. You, tells you that I've dealt with all kinds of things. And all That's kinds right. Of things. So basically, like a... Uh, Pastor Jemima has said, you get to comment, you get to ask questions as you subscribe. Mm -hmm. So don't forget, ask any question you want, anything at all. Don't be ashamed, mm -hmm. don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. And um, Pastor Jemima, as the days go by, will definitely pay attention to your question. It'll get to you. I know the, the questions will be a lot, mm -hmm. but just keep watching. We'll get to yours as time goes on, and then we will, of course. She will take care of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because we, well, uh, sometimes we will. Them. Well, sometimes we yeah, will. Yeah, we will. Great. So I'm like super excited about the first topic we're, we're dealing in this episode because um, generally you can't remove relationships from life. You have to be with people so you have to relate with them. Um, I'm, I'm more concerned about us that are unmarried and have to have relationships before we get married. How does it um affect your potential living with um a partner mm -hmm. for the rest of your life which is actually a very long time but how does it actually affect your living with another person how you are raised mm -hmm. your past experiences because we have like two sects of people especially in the church mm -hmm. the people that will say oh i never did the whole relationship to relationship thing i just my first boyfriend was the first, yes, it's my husband, and we're together and we're happy. Then there's another sect of people mm -hmm. that have had relationships with virtually every brother and sister in church, mm -hmm. and then they eventually end up. So at what point do you draw the line? How do you know, should I be in this relationship for too long? Or is it is it actually a problem for me to get out of this relationship, it doesn't work out for me, and get another one? Or should I just stay? Because I want my first boyfriend to be my husband, be my husband. Well, you know what? I, I, I like it that if your, your first boyfriend is your husband, well, praise the Lord. But you know what? Life is so varied that it doesn't happen like that for everybody. And um, the stories that we have in the Bible, individuals that we can pick out in the Bible, um, sometimes you have the Bible is silent about some things and sometimes the Bible is not silent about some things. Now, how many relationships you should have before you get married is one of those things that you cannot quote a scripture for. 
You can say, well, the Bible said it's so and so. Have only one relationship. You can draw examples. Um, but then you also know that times have changed. Um, it, what happened with Isaac? He didn't even see the girl. She was married, you know, to him before she met him. Her dowry was paid before she met the dude. Now you imagine if she walks into that garden, you know, that, by the way we, uh, the, the Bible said it, he was in the field in the evening, and then when they came, and then he, she said, who is this young man? I said, that's the one that she alighted from her horse or donkey or whatever she was climbing on, a uh, camel, you know. <laughs> and then he took her to his mother's room, and that was it, marriage settled. Ain't gonna happen today. Not gonna happen. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I don't, I don't see myself going to one uh, village in Bauchi State where, is where I'm from and picking a wife for Josh. This one won't collect that one from my hand. <laughs> so I'm just, I, I don't see that happening here. So we have to be able to, even though the Bible is silent about it, draw certain examples to be able to say this will work and this will not work. You see, there's something called common sense and then there's something called the Holy Spirit or someone, not something, someone called the Holy Spirit. And he lives on your inside. The Bible said he will guide you into all truth. So if you cannot even read it from here, he, can be, he being inside of you can guide you into all truth. Point is, if people do not even have a relationship with God, people don't know that having a relationship with God plays a major role in whether or not you succeed in your life. Now, I'm not saying people who play church. I'm not saying those who've learned the language, they're also in church, so, you know, because right now, you don't even know, there's no badge for being born again. Everybody comes to church. So in the church, the unbeliever is there. I mean, the devil is right there. Scripture said, when the sons of God were gathered, then the devil came. So it's what's happening right now. So you have unbelievers also coming to sit down. So there's a possibility that you start a relationship with someone. And when you start that relationship, you now discover that, no, um, this guy in church is different from this guy when we're outside the church. And then so many church girls don't want to be labeled as the girl who has dated everybody. Yeah. So she's like, nah, just marry him. I don't want headache. Let me just marry this person. She, she wants to cake, you know, put icing on the cake. She's looking for chocolate, but what she has is vanilla. So she now puts the icing. You know, icing doesn't let you know what's on the inside. She just puts the icing and then they get married. But guess what? After you get married, you want to eat this cake, you go, no. Whether it is vanilla or it is chocolate. So it's, I always say a broken relationship is by far better than a broken marriage. And I use myself as an example. This is well, one of the things that you know, I'm known for. I'm, I'm known to use myself as an example. I, I am my best example, if, 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 if it's okay to say that. I am my best example. I was dating someone before I got married. I've been married 27 years. Yes, I'm a mother of four and a grandmother of three. And when I was dating this young man, I dated him because of the pressure that he put me under. I was a singer, I was always on the pulpit, you know, we the girls in the choir, now we everybody know, you know, at the end of the day, this one is coming to tell you God said, that one is coming to also tell you God said. You know, meanwhile, let me say it to all the guys that are watching, please drop that God said card when you want to marry a girl. Please drop it. Please drop it. Please drop it. Because you know what, the first man that came and said, you know God, you are the one that, that gave me this one. Um, from that time, I think God said, now he that finds a wife. Okay? So don't come to a girl with a, you know, God said, because she's a prayer warrior in the church. If you, because what you are telling her, what you are telling her in the moment you say God said, you are, you are telling her that, I don't really like you, if not for the fact that God said. That's how I will read it. That's how I will read it. So what if God didn't tell you that I'm your wife? You know, like me. Now, because God talk. You understand what I'm saying? So, by the way, that's just advice to the young men. You love the girl, just go and say, I love you. And I want to spend the rest of my life with you, or however it is they put the lyrics. But just say it that way. You, you know you have taken your time to pray, you have spoken to God about it, which is important that you do. But that shouldn't be your pickup line, please. Okay? So I'm saying that I got into that and he put me under so much pressure. He's the one dude that will not go. He's the one dude that will keep follow up. I'm having classes. He's outside. I'm doing, so I'm like, let me just leave this guy and rest. 
and I started dating this guy. And anytime he comes to see me, he's the one doing the talking I'm looking. I'm looking at how I cannot stand this person. So I know that even now as a pastor, when I wear my pastoral robe to wed people, I'm always asking, are they really in love? Is there anyone here under pressure to just get married? Because two weeks before my wedding day was when I bolted out of the relationship. Two weeks. My wedding gown was hanging in my room and everything else was there. When I, when I, when I, um, I became conscious of my truth and I spoke to myself. And I know so many people having that kind of background and, and pastoring now. I have, so many, I have well over a thousand girls physically that I'm pastoring and you, you wouldn't want that said because pastors have also told the community or the world that they never had issues. They don't have issues. They are, you know, neighbors with God, so they are in the perfect realm of life. But those things that God allowed you to pass through are the things that God is going to use today to help you help someone. And I'm able to tell people, the wedding card is out. You have bought the wedding gown. Sweetheart, be come to the place of your truth and know that I can't really deal with this guy. The, nothing wrong with the boy, whatever. I just didn't like the guy. As husband, <laughs> I liked him as a person, as a Christian. But mm -mm. husband thing wasn't, but you know, the guy was, and then other girls who were my friends, like, hey, you don't want to say no to this brother? He's so kind. He chooses his words before he speaks. But Auntie, I'm not going to be. I, it, it wasn't happening. But because everybody else that was my friend was saying, he's a nice guy, he's a nice guy. So I was marrying him for everybody else. You understand me? I got to the place where when I, when I became conscious of my own truth and I was able to operate from my own truth, I walked up to him. I said, I'm sorry. I apologize to everyone that I got involved in pre making preparations and all of that and putting whatever, whatever. And my mom was the only person who went, ah, hey, thank you. Because I didn't see how the two of you, you understand. But my mom really liked him too as a person. You know, and that's another, maybe a topic for another day, yeah. that because you don't like somebody doesn't mean that there's enmity. Yeah. Brother, I like you, but it's not that type of like. You understand? So you, 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 you can marry the first person you are ever in love with. Amen to that. But that is so rare now. And um, I'm not also saying have 50 before you choose the one. Because by the time you go around so many boys, you will even forget what love really means. You will forget what love really means. Because truth is, you might like this person's height, but not like his teeth. This other one you like his teeth, but not like his height. So that one you will not like. So your 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 fundamental reason for getting married has to be dealt with. For wanting to have a relationship has to be dealt with. And that is not about the other person. That's about you. That's about you. Where you are at. So if I've answered your question, you can have the first person. My my baby girls, my uh, my my other baby girl, the first person she ever had a relationship with ends up marrying. You get what I'm saying? So I, I wouldn't make that a law that that's how it would happen with everybody because it didn't happen with their mom like that. But you see, we're improving. I, the, my kids are an improved generation from me, so they didn't have the experiences I had. And my own experiences helped to build them into having their own relations. So you can have whatever, but please don't make yourself um, a measuring rod for other people's lives by saying, okay, let me do it one week with this person and do another two weeks with this one and see how it goes. Because at the end of the day, you will end up marrying wrong. So I'm saying that when you have that relationship with the Holy Spirit, He enables you to know things that you don't commit your ways unto the